Hi, good afternoon. Um, my name is Jonathan Chan. I had posted in the group, the Dell Tech Cost Point and t and &E group, Facebook group, about just, you know, recording a quick video to show you how to use Cost Point BI. Uh, so, you know, figured just record a quick video, nothing, nothing too formal or anything. Um, so right now I'm actually in my company's uh, test environment. Uh, so I think what we want to do is just create like a quick uh, GL detail report. And the reason why I, I typically do this for when I do trainings. And, and the reason for that is because <clears throat> when you are looking at the GL detail out of uh, cost point, it gives you, you know, all the transactions, but it's not really in an Excel friendly format. So if you were to export it into Excel, uh, it's just a nightmare to deal with that. So I like to uh, start off with just a simple GL detail where you can easily manipulate things, you know, uh, create filters, pivot tables, whatever you want to do, you can just mess with it in Excel. Uh, so I do that just by going into uh, BI. <clears throat> and let's get this out of the way. I don't even know if I can, or if you even see this. Uh, so, I mean, all we have to do is just create a new report by selecting new in the bottom left and then select report. <clears throat> and then from here, it's going to ask you uh, if you want to create a template. I always just select blank. Um, haven't really found the use for any of the other ones uh, outside of, you know, creating dashboards or active reports where you're putting sections of information all over, you know, all one page. For me, if I'm just going to create like a, a simple report, uh, I will use blank. So all I did was just double click it. Uh, so now on the left side is asking me to select a source. Uh, so you can select the source here. And if you click this button in the top right of that little section, it's the same thing. Uh, they, you know, just want you to add, add a package. Uh, so in the packages, uh, I like to use the legacy packages for now. Um, there are some restrictions that Costpoint has, or the Dell Tech has set for these, where you can't pull via SQL and all that. So, um, you know, people are always afraid to change um, one of them. So I'm using the legacy packages for now. That will change though, but anyways, so under package, legacy packages, I'll select general ledger CP and it treats it like a folder, but now I can actually go and select open. So if I were to go back, uh, you'd see that there's nothing here. Uh, so under general ledger, just like open. And from here, I mean, it's, it's really just all about dragging and dropping. Uh, if you've used Query Studio, uh, it's, you can create, you can make the chain, uh, make the settings so it looks more like Query Studio. Uh, and you can do that first by creating a list. So we're just going to uh, click that plus sign in the middle. And the list is just a data container that takes the relationships built in the package and just applies it so that when you pull everything, when you pull your data items in, um, it makes sure all the rows are related to each other and you know, don't have just random information all over the place. If you were to do the same thing with the table, you would still have to uh, add or create data containers or add data containers to the table. Uh, so, you know, the list is the is, uh, best way to, to go about this. Close that. And uh, so right now it's asking me to create a query. And the reason for that is because every data container, uh, whether it's a list, cross tab, graph, whatever, it needs to have a query behind it. And a query is just a subset of the package. So that way you're not pulling every single data item from the general ledger package into your report. It would take you forever to load and there aren't relationships built between all the different tables. So uh, this just helps you narrow down the amount of information that you're pulling into a report so that you can use it for whatever you want to use it for. Uh, so in this, in here, we don't have to, uh, you know, do anything. We just select okay. And on the right, left side, on the left side, we have our GL posting summary. So this is going to have, this is going to have your account, you know, all of your summary level data. 
Uh, so let's go ahead and you know select fiscal year period account project ID. And I'm just holding down control as I add all these. <clears throat> so since we are creating a general ledger detail report and not a file balance report, <clears throat> I don't want to include amount or hours. Uh, the reason for that is now if you have a hundred uh, transact hundred lines in one posting and you pulled all those hundred lines into your posting, Whatever your amount is, is going to get repeated 100 times. Whatever your hours is, is going to get repeated 100 times. So here, I'm just going to pull in uh, the descriptive data or descriptive data items. And then I'll collapse that and then go down to your general letter detail. And then from here, I can pull in your ID, your name, you know, check number, ca uh, cash receipt number. And one small thing to note is if I were to, you know, the data items get dropped in in the order that I select them. Uh, so, you know, if you want them to go in in a certain order, you'd want to make sure that you select them in that, that particular order. Uh, so I'm going to take these, I'm going to make sure I drop them inside my data container. One of the first things that I had trouble with, or, and I see, uh, other new users have trouble with is if you take this and you drop it out here in the middle of nowhere, as you can see, it, this nice little box, uh, pops up. Basically, what it's going to give you is it's going to give you a separate list, a separate data container. So now these two are not related unless you go in and you create your master detail relationships. But we don't want to do that, right? That defeats the purpose of creating an Excel friendly uh, GL detail. So undo that and then make sure I drop it within my data container that I've already created. All right, so now I have all my data containers in here. And as you can see, I picked timesheet date last. So um, it goes over here at the end. If I want to move it, simply select, click and drag. Um, another thing to note is when you wanted to, when you want to move a column, a lot of times new users will, will go in and they'll have the entire uh, data container selected. So when you try to move it, you can't move anything because it has everything selected. So you want to make sure you can press escape. You can click down here. Well, I guess you can't really click down here. You can push escape and that's going to uh, unselect everything. And now you can go ahead and move everything, right? All right, so now that we have our, our data items pulled into our report, um, for those of you who are you know used to Query Studio, who have experience using Query Studio, you can easily make this look like Query Studio. Uh, so right now we're just looking at the data item names and it's just showing you the structure of your report. Well, let's just say I want to change that and actually see the results. So in the top right, we have this little drop down where I think we had page design and then we just changed page design to page preview. And as you can see, I have the data in here from, you know, uh, from the source and you don't have to worry about this data. It's all dummy data. Again, this is my test system. So not to worry about you seeing these numbers or whatever. So this is a great, uh, but you know, we are in 2022 and our data is from 2020. I don't even know if I have, okay. So I do have 2022 in here. Okay, perfect. Actually I have 2019 in here too. So, you know, once you've been in Cosplay for a very long time, uh, if you just were to extract this into Excel, I mean, it's going to be kind of a pain to deal with. Uh, honestly, I don't care about 2019. I don't care about 2020. I don't really even care about 2021 right now. My main focus is 2022. So go ahead and create a filter. Uh, you can easily create a filter by selecting your fiscal year. And then here <clears throat> you have your icons. So in Korea Studio, you used to have different colors. Now they've made it black and white. I don't know why, but whatever. Anyways, so you just select the filter and then they have a little arrow to the right of that filter icon. Uh, so we'll go ahead and just select create custom filter. And as you can see, I have has 2019 selected. If I select it, unselect it, uh, it'll, it'll either populate or remove it from this right side. So basically right now, if I were to select OK, it is only going to show me transactions from 2019. Great. Uh, let's go to 2022. Now, if I select OK, then, you know, it filters everything nice and nice and easy. 
So let's say I wanted to run this again, but I wanted to see 2021. Oops. Force of habit, I'm always downloading stuff to Excel. Um, as you can see, there's, there's nothing here, really. I, I, can't, I can't do anything. Um, it's not asking me to reprompt or anything, so right now I'm pretty much stuck. Unless I go in here and I edit my detail filters and change this from 2022 to 2021. Then it changes it. All right, but let's make this easier on the user. Uh, maybe the user is you. Maybe the user is your friend down the hall. Let's change this to from edit filters. Let's change this to let's select this pencil. <clears throat> select settings, and we are going to select prompt for values when report is run in viewer. So it's like okay, okay, okay. We run this. Let's just do uh, HTML, and it should ask me for a year once it loads. I got too much open. Yep. So now, as you can see, it is asking me for a year. Uh, so let's go 2020. We haven't messed with that year yet. So like, okay, and now, as you can see, we have 2020. <clears throat> One of the cool things about uh, this newer version of, of Cost Point BI is that once you have it in this HTML uh, format, you can actually go in and start changing, you know, making edits here. So let's say I only want to see account IDs 20-00-001. You can actually go up here, select like filter, and include only that account. So now, as you can see, it's only showing me data item for that one account. Now, this doesn't affect your report. It only affects your your uh, results. So if you were to go back, it's not going to have that filter. So if I go back to my edit filters, as you can see, there, there's no filter on account. Uh, this just is helpful if you wanted to uh, just kind of do some sanity checks. Uh, you can also do uh, sums here. You can do different, different total or different... Um, Aggregations. If I just do total, that's probably the, the most frequently used. So as you can see, it totals at the bottom. Now, if I undo that and I scroll down to the bottom, you can see there's no total here. So there are some functions here that you can use, uh, you can play around with. If you, for whatever reason, don't like Excel uh, when you're doing your testing, I always prefer Excel. It's what I've been used to. So, uh, yeah. uh, so once you've done that, you are happy with whatever results you have here. You can actually close out of here. Um, this is not my report. This is actually the, the HTML format that I ran. So if you look at my tabs, if I go back here, as you can see, I have my report still open. So if I close this tab, <clears throat> it's going to ask me, you know, I have changes made. Do I want to save them? No, I, I don't really need to because the change it's talking about is the filter on the county. So let's like leave and go back to my report. All right, uh, so you can do the same thing. I mean, you could do fiscal year. You can create a filter on your period as well. You can do individual, you can do a range. You can do keep all of these values. You can do exclude values. You can do individuals. All these different options that you have uh, that you can use for when you are building a report. All these things will make your life easier so you're not having to pull stuff out of different screens and cost points. So click settings and then click your prompt for values and reports on the viewer. So click OK. <clears throat> now when I, I rerun this, it's going to open that new tab. And once it loads, it's going to ask me for 20. And then do 20, 22, I think I saw period 6 in there. All right, our filter did not work. Now why? Ah, because I had exclude. So if I go back to my results, I should have um, not exclude. Not greater than one. Not greater than one. Not greater than one. Does that make sense? Keep these values. Let's actually change this to uh, between. So now I can get a range. Let's do one, two, and then try this again. Well, let's close out of that. 
<clears throat> and you didn't, I didn't have to close it. I mean, if I were to rerun it in HTML, it, it politely closes whatever filter, uh, whatever tab I had open and opens a new one. So I don't have like a billion tabs here. Okay. <clears throat> so I have 2020, page one. As you can see, there's no way to toggle between pages because these are all the results from 2022, page one. Okay, I mean, uh, I mean, if you wanted to, you can go ahead and add filters to your account, projects. Uh, you can actually do optional prompts as well. Uh, yeah, so let's do that. Let's do an optional prompt. Right. No, they don't have it here. So I typically do things on the back end where I'm actually going through the query, adding, you know, typing these, these. Um, Typing in my filters, typing in whatever, my logic. Uh, but here we'll just do condition, make sure we have prompt, and then push OK. And then let's say I wanted to make this filter optional. You can do that by going into your uh, filter, edit filters, select whichever filter you want to make optional, and just make it optional. So now if I were to rerun this, And I'm going to leave my account blank. We'll do one, one, and OK. So as you can see, I selected fiscal year and a period of one, between one and one. And then I also have my account ID here, which is everything because I didn't make a selection. All right. So there, I have a basic... GL detail report, nothing fancy. Uh, it took me 17 minutes because I was just, you know, talking. But it really, this could take you a couple minutes. Uh, there's really not a whole lot to it. Uh, you know, it's better than trying to go into accounting, get a ledger, and then pulling this report. For those of you who have not seen the GL detail report, uh, it just beats going into here and trying to export this to Excel, right? And then mess with all the formatting, do your filters, you know, uh, makes life a little bit easier. Once you get, you know, used to this, then the fun stuff really starts to happen. You can start pulling stuff. Um, maybe I'll do a video where I'm, you know, pulling hours at a time and expense and then getting the, the, the bill rate from Project Workforce to give you an estimated, um, you know, revenue for hours that have not been processed or not been exported to Costco. Uh, those are the fun things because then you get to uh, do some complex joins and everything. But uh, hopefully this video was helpful. Um, if you have any requests or you hit any roadblocks, uh, let me know. I'd be happy to create a video uh, just to show you how to do it. Um, Unfortunately, I feel like Cost Point BI is extremely underutilized. Uh, I feel like this tool can help a lot of people save a lot of time and headache. Uh, so, you know, whatever I can do to help you, uh, please let me know. Uh, again, uh, don't hesitate to reach out if you have any questions or if you have any requests for, uh, you know, how to's on, on something else. I'd be happy to create a pretty quick video for you. Thanks and uh, take care.